All right, so hi everyone. I actually was working for a little bit in um, in our meeting and the recording was not um, was not recording my screen for some reason. So I found out that I was not even showing you guys what I want to show you. So I've restarted the recording. We're on the correct screen. But um, a couple of the steps of the things that I did um, were lost. Um, so I'm gonna go over those now. What I wanted to do was I wanted to show you the rest of the poster design and also the rest of the assessment and do a quick demo of them for you. So um, what I had said was, you know, I like to bring in my text from my Word document and I like to copy and paste it over into a text box off to the side so I can just kind of copy the text in to my poster. but you know, still see how, what I have left for text going on. And then, um, you know, it kind of just gives me a visual of, of what's going on. The other thing that I had mentioned was that I had my grid set up on my page and I dropped in some rulers here to kind of separate my poster into four different quadrants. So that way I can, um, you know, kind of make my viewer's eye move through the page. Um, another thing that I did was I went up into my, um, into my page one, which was my mood board, and I redrew this little um, star here because I'm going to use this down here as my bullet point. And once I had drawn that out with the, with the pen tool, which I am going to, I'll show you that again. Um, just because I had done a couple of um, interesting things, so I'll actually I'll actually redraw this one, um, and then I'll draw this one, so we can have a couple of different um, characters that I can do. So I went over to the pen tool, and I opened up the um, the stroke, and I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna drag that out so I have it over here, and. What I wanted to do was I wanted to make sure that it was rounded so I don't get that really squared off edge, especially on this one. Um, but I'm gonna use the rounded over here as well. So I'm, I'm making the outline yellow so that way it'll show up um, where I'm drawing. And I like to draw with the pen tool with it on the outline as opposed to the fill. I just make it, I, I think it makes it a little bit easier to see what it is that I'm doing. So I'm going to click here with my pen tool and I'm going to click to the next point. And without letting up, I'm still holding down the mouse button. I'm going to drag to the left here, which makes it curve to the right. So you can kind of see, see my curve? All right, so if I drag to the right, it's gonna make a curve to the left. If I drag to the left, it's gonna make a curve to the right. And then I can let go. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna hold down my option key. And it gives me, see how it gives me that triangle there? I'm going to click on that point, that little blue point there, and I'm going to bring it back over to the right. So that way when I click down to make my next pen point, see how the curve now follows to the right. And then you'll notice it kind of squared it off. So I'm gonna round that cap out again. There we go. Next I'm going to click over here and I'm gonna pull a little bit to the right so that way it, it rounds out to the left. 
Next thing I'm gonna do, hold down my option key. Again, I get that triangle. And I'm gonna drag a little bit over here. See how I'm dragging a little bit past where I want it to, to curve to? And I'm gonna close it out. You'll notice that you can close it out when it goes from being that plus sign to a circle. And even if you don't get that correct, you can still pull down before you click off. So I've remade this shape. Now let's say that I don't have it exactly correct. And you can see how this, this line right here is a little bit wonky. I'm going to go to my direct selection tool, which is my white arrow. And if I click in there, I can fix, I'll zoom in, really zoom in. I can fix these points. So I'm gonna drag this one back up and drag this one out. And I don't want it to be perfect because it needs to look like, oops, it's hand drawn. So this kind of looks hand drawn now, which I think is great. Um, if I wanna color it in so it looks more like this type of um, star or diamond shape, all I need to do is go from the outline to filling it in. See, and then I, I probably would make it a little bit wider then. And then what I can do is I'm gonna drop this into my CC libraries. So I'm gonna drag it and drop it into my CC libraries. So now I have a filled in, um, diamond and then I have that little star asterisk and then I can delete it where I've drawn it on top of my mood board and I kind of went over both parts the rounding it out which was what I wanted to show you on the little asterisk so I'm going to go back down here and what I was also saying is that in the live session, um, I picked my fonts and I picked my colors in my mood board. So what I did was I copied and pasted, this was really all that you missed, was I copied and pasted my, my text into a new text box over here. And I made sure that I was, you know, adhering to my column with my gutter in between. So I drew the text box to the left side of the gutter. So this is the column right here, and then the skinnier of the two, that's my gutter. So I wanna make sure that I'm adhering to that gutter because I kinda of dropped a ruler right there, which if I move it out of the way, there it is. And then to use that asterisk, all I need to do is drag it out of my library and plop it down and I can resize it to the size that I want it to be. And you'll notice once I start to resize it, I kind of need to up the, the line width or weight as well. Uh, that's a little bit better. But you know, I want it to be inside of my text box. I could actually do that as well. So I've selected it with my black arrow key and I'm gonna hit Command X, which will get rid of it. And I'm gonna go in with my type tool and select right in front of the first name. And I'm gonna hit Command V and it pastes it in. See, perfect. So what if I wanna do one after the other? Well, I could do that. So I'm gonna drag in this one next, click, and I'm gonna hold down shift to just kind of size it, the size I want it to be. So I can make them kind of roughly the same, same size. I'm actually gonna make it a little bit fatter. I'm gonna hit Command X again, and I'm gonna paste it in here. But I want to make sure their names are lined up, right? Because sometimes if I space, the space might be a little bit different based on the width of my characters that I'm using here. So I'm going to remove the space. Just delete it. And instead, I'm going to put in a tab. 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 
tab, 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 tab. And this is something that you probably did in DES 105 but maybe you don't remember it. So now that I've put those tabs in, I'm gonna do a command A, and I'm gonna go up to type, and I'm going to go down to tabs, and I'm gonna edit them. So I want the tab to be left justified at a certain point on this ruler. So maybe I want it to line up, see how it lines up with the end of, um, my, that's a colt, not a colt. Yeah, it's a colon. I'm like, semicolon, no. Colon right there, just for a good little visual. So I'm gonna move that right there. Um, but what if I want, you know, these to move over a little bit as well with it. I'm gonna add in the second tab, right? Maybe right there, right at the end of the B. And I'm gonna have to go in and add a tab before each of the shapes. The second tab at the front, there we go. And then what I can do is I can actually copy the shapes down and put them in where they go. So now this feels a little bit more like something Lauren Holm would do, right? And let's say I want to, you know, change the color of them. You know, I can do that as well. I can actually go in with my white arrow, my direct selection tool, and I can change maybe, whoops, that one to blue. I accidentally changed the border, not the color. Come on, there we go. Uh, that light blue. So again, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty neat the, the different things that you can do in InDesign. All right, so I have this information in now, so I'll go up and cross that out. All right, next I need to, again, thinking of my proximity here. Um, Central County Museum of Art is where it's going to be held and it's June 18th to October 17th. But you need to visit centralcountymuseum.com for tickets and more information. So thinking back to my four quadrants, I'm gonna add in a line right there. Um, I might even want to do something like this. And I'm going to put where it's located right here and then the visit centralcountymuseum.com for tickets and more information. I'm going to put that down here. So let's, let's do that. All right. So I'm going to grab this text, copy it. My type tool, draw my text box. And again, adhere to my margin right there. I'm just gonna copy that in. So Central County Museum of Art. I am going to do the bubbler font for this. And I'm gonna make this yellow. And I'm gonna make it big. But not right up to the edge, because I want to give myself enough room between these. And this is going to be in Beavis. So you might notice I'm kind of doing the opposite of what I did here with my fonts. And this will be white. The dates. And... Maybe do something like that. And again, I'm kind of designing my text, my font here. So I'm gonna do 
something like that. And I'm probably going to actually tab this over and add some tabs in here. And I might change that up a little bit. Right, so let's, let's take care of these tabs. And every time you want to use it, like you want it to match up to like right up to the edge of the text box. It'll just make your life easier. So I always close it out and then go up to tabs and open it up again so it snaps itself right to the um right to the the text box. And I'm gonna move my first tab right there. And then my second tab. I'm gonna put it in the center though. I'm gonna use a center one and kind of center it between that margin. And I'm not even convinced I'm gonna leave the two like this, honestly. Um, actually, I might even, I have an idea. You know, sometimes when you're, delete that tab. want to center these ones. So I've got like a little bit past this one to kind of center it. And then I'm actually gonna leave the return there. Close you out. I'm gonna make a copy of this text box. So I'm holding down the option key and dragging. I'm gonna put in the two right there. Kind of do like a little thing like this. And Do something like that. And and I might even drag this up here. And I think I'm going to actually vertically center this within this space. Let's take a look at this. So you can see how that's starting to come together now. I like it. I almost want featuring work by on one line though. And this I'm going to vertically align in this area. So I'm going to go up to object, text frame options, and I'm going to center it vertically. And sometimes, even if you've done that, some, like this is a weird kind of font, you might need to just still move it down a little manually or you know align it so it's it really is aligned it's just drawn that this font is drawn kind of weird i've i've dealt with this in the past that's how i know it cuz i've dealt with it <laughs> all right so i've got this information in so i'm going to strike that out so now i have left um visit central county museum um, dot com for tickets and more information so i'm going to copy this going to go down here 
draw my text box. Add this into this area. And I'm going to use that bubbler. And there's a reason for this, um, honestly, because a URL should never be in all caps. It's really hard to read. Um, so, you know, I want to make sure that I'm not doing that, not putting it in all caps. And I will see if I need to go with a different color on that or if it stands out enough. Maybe, maybe the yellow for this. All right, perfect. And what I might do is I think I am going to um, add in a picture of Lauren Home and maybe, maybe even some of her work, maybe just kind of running, you know, a bar down here with her work and her. So I'm gonna go back to her website. And pick a picture of her. Like this one's fun, obviously. Um, we'll go to learn more about me. Actually, this is a good picture. So I'm going to save this image. I'm going to put it in my DES 109, my work, my week three. Here, save that. Go down. And I'm going to make it, um, bring it into Photoshop and make it CMYK because it's for a poster. So. And close. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to, because this is an image, I'm going to run it outside of my margin purposely. Honestly, in a situation like this, I would probably have a, a poster that had a bleed created, but that wasn't in your um, instructions. So I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'll fit that nicely into the space right there. And we'll go back into her website and let me see if I can Um, let's do a save as. Whoops. Oh, yeah. Uh, Instagram doesn't really let you just like save your, her, you know, pictures. So let's see. Um, try to see which one will go really great with that background. 
Um, I've got like a couple of good spaces I can fit that in, fit a few things in. Okay, I have an idea. Let's save this one. And let's save this one. All right. and we'll bring those both in to Photoshop. And save them and close them. And save them and close them. Just change those again, like same thing as the other image, change them to CMYK. So my thought process was to move this up here and draw my rectangle box. And again, giving myself some breathing room before the bottom of this information in the box that I've drawn. I'm gonna place this one in here and I'm going to go to object fitting and I want to um, fill the frame proportionally. And then I'm gonna to go to my white direct selection tool arrow, and I'm gonna just select the inside and manually scoot this down. So it's, I'm purposely kind of cropping this out. And I'm run this across now, which means I might have to bring, I don't wanna bring down the, the URL. So I'm actually going to just bring down visit to 26 points and this down to 26 points. And I'm gonna center this now, this text box right in the center. Ooh, I'm good. If I say so myself. And bring this up a little bit. I'm gonna do the same thing. Actually, I don't even need to do that. And see how I have that arrow right there, or not the arrow. See how there's that box right there? That's the center of that image. So I am actually going to do that. Drop a ruler, move it down here. Going to grab all of this, this, nope, thought maybe I grouped it. Going to group it, group that, grab you, grab you. Bring this stuff down here. Again, I'm just kind of, I'm keeping my grid, but I'm just kind of moving things around. I'm gonna make sure that you are grouped. Bring you down here a bit. Right there. And I'm going to bring you down as well. I'm gonna make a copy of this, drag it up here. Ooh, I might need to do a little bit. Editing. 
to make it fit. I'm hoping this will look kind of cool. So I've taken this piece of hers and I have it kind of cropped in a cool way where it's like the bottom's at the top and the top is at the bottom. And then I'm gonna have all the information floating in between. And I'm going to move, I'm just gonna manually crop her into the space. Perfect. And need to get design out of there. Get this down a bit. And I want to see if this works with still having this information right here. I think I might. Do that. Let's take a look. It's always hard to tell when you've got all these boxes everywhere. It's easier to go to preview and see. So this, move it down just a smidge more. And there it is. There's my poster. So it really has more of a vibe of her. And what I can actually do is um, add in some of these doodly things that I made. Just uh, change the color a bit. Even change it. be an outline instead. Okay. And Again, for this one, I need to make it a little bit bolder each time because I I have it set up with just a border, not an inside. And I can even rotate it. Rotate the other way. Uh, maybe this one can be white. There. So I think that that has the feel of being a Lauren home poster. And this is not the design, like the type of graphic design I normally do. So this is outside of my design comfort zone in a way. But I think it came out pretty cool. So I'm going to save this. And we'll do high quality PDF. And we're gonna replace the one that was in there. And honestly, now that I'm looking at this, oh, it's ne it, you're never done, right? Move that up a little. 
want this to be a little bit closer. Group you. And send you to the back. Got that. This text box needs to come up a little. There we go. Feel like still up. Right in the center, but there we go. And I'm centering it like vertically in between these, you know, just kind of visually. All right, there we go. Save. Make another PDF. You're never done. You're always looking and you're saying, ugh, I could tweak that a little. I could tweak this a little. All right, so then what you're going to do is you're going to cite your citations as well. So for my citations for this, um, it would be her website. Going to go into Word. I don't need to get anyone's attention. Okay. Like document. So up at the top, I'm going to have citations. Um, that'll be my heading. And you know, you should set this up nicely. Copy and paste this. I like to do keep text only so it follows the same. Um, thing that I'm using. Um, let's see, I'm going to do her actual photos too. So where I got them from. So let me see, we grabbed this one. So I'm going to copy the image address. And I'm going to say images. from here copy image address here um where did we go to about her i believe this image and oh that blue one Is that under work i think it was Right here. And this one. I'm going to save this as my citations. Oops, citations. There we go. And then I'm also going to save it as a PDF. So we're going to do file save as, change in the drop down to PDF, export it. Close that out. And then going to go into Acrobat. And I need to combine the two PDFs into one file. So I want to go to File, Create, Combine Files into a single PDF. So I've got my citations and my assignment three. Drag those in. And put it in the wrong order. So I'm just going to grab citations, move it to to the behind there, click combine, and now I have my mood board, my poster, and my citations. And it named it binder, so I'm going to do file save as. And I'm going to click choose a different folder. It, it, it always chooses some random place, not the place where I was. And 
go in and name it that assignment three with my first and last name. Replace the one that's in there. And close it out. And there you go. And now it's ready to upload. So we'll close it out of InDesign. And if you find that you have your stuff all over the place, I have my stuff in one folder, you're going to want to package it to just put everything back together. It'll make your life a lot easier. All right, so let me do the assessment. So I was working on this, if you recall. Um, in Photoshop, and it kind of died as I started to do the dream with your, um, and I need to go back in and see what it was that was the rest of the text. I think it was like dream with your eyes wide open, a dream with your eyes wide open. Perfect. I don't know why it completely crashed out on me, but it did. I was trying to move this to the second line. Everything, everything went to hell in a handbasket. So I'm gonna do dream with your, and I'm gonna do eyes wide open over here. So I'm gonna make a copy of the dream, move it, and paste in that eyes, wide open. I don't know why it does that. Ugh. No, well. And I'm going to manually move open over with some spaces right there. And let's select this. I want to change. I want to change the flag on this. So I'm going to go to warp text. And I'm going to just kind of, I want it to like come up a little bit more. So I got to manually make it a little bit different than the dream one. Um, that's pretty cool. No, no, I don't like that. Hold on. See how I'm coming out here until I get the um, move tool? I'm right clicking and going down to warp text. And that's what's giving me the option to edit it a little bit. Let me check that. Scan a little bit too close to the brim of her hat. And I'm going to bring down with your. I'm just not liking the fact that maybe I need to fix dream. I don't like that they're not matching up. <sighs> On the scene. Let's try this. Let's take this out of this one. The dream 
hit enter. Eyes wide open. There we go. And then I can. There. Now it's on the same. It's on the same plane now. It's trying to manually get it on that plane, and it just yeah wasn't happening. I'm gonna watch where the the dot of the I is getting too close to the M. I'm trying to manually bring that over, and then I can kind of move this whole thing over as well. Select both of these. Move that out of the brim. I can get rid of that layer now. So I'm not using it. And maybe with your, maybe it becomes, no, no. It's like I almost want it to be a little bit closer. Maybe I can rotate it. And I'm gonna try to skew it. I'm gonna hold down command. See how it goes from being the two arrows to the white arrow? Kinda gonna skew it like that. Ooh, I like that. All right. So now this says travel. We've got the plane, we've got the lady with the suitcase, we've got the girl on the beach. So we've got all kind of like all of the the steps of her trip, right? She gets to the airport with her luggage, she gets on the plane, she ends up here. It's three different photos, but you know, the girl kind of has the same hair, so we can pretend it's her in both photos. You're not seeing your face in either one. So we've got it and she's come full circle, right? Perfect. All right. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to, again, you would have had the three artboards for this one. So you would turn on and do your grocery delivery service for your next one and turn on and do your fitness club. And, you know, you'll have them all together. Saved. Save the PSD file. Always make sure you have the PSD file saved and do a file save as. And then do your PDF that you will submit and click save, hit okay, save, yes, that's fine. And then go in and you'll see what it's done. Oh, is it didn't do it the way I wanted it to do. Hold on, come here, file. I wanted to do your artboards as pages. It's just so much easier to do it that way. Oh, here we go. Export artboards to PDF. That'll be a lot easier. Instead of doing a file, save as. Here we go. And then multi-page document. Perfect. Make sure it's putting it in the right place. New. Okay. And then run. There we go. Yeah, let's open. Here we go. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Artboards to PDF. The other ones were blank, so it didn't do anything. <laughs> but um, let me put something on those artboards just so you can see. So we'll put, I'm going to just put the words fitness club here. Don't know why you're not showing up. That's just weird. Oh, probably because you are in. Wait, there we go. Fitness club and grocery. Save.
And again, file, export, artboards to PDF, multi-page document, run, And what? The, why are you doing things? My Adobe's a disaster today. I don't know why. It's not grabbing all of them. Oh, sometimes I like when things don't go right because then I can figure it out with you guys. But other times I'm just like, come on, our boards to PDF, our boards as in all of them. Include, yes, export the selected. Oh, maybe that was why. Maybe they weren't all three of them. I didn't have them selected. All right, that must be it. If export selected artboards and you don't have all three of them selected in the layers, that's what it is. And run. <laughs> Third type's the charm today. Just having an all around fail today. Please work. Unless if you were still saving. Are you still saving? Are you, did you put them somewhere else? Are you just never going to do anything I want you to do? What's going on here? Export. Artboard to PDF. Yes, all right. Open. Artboard content only. Include the background. Sure. Multi page document. <laughs> Please work. <laughs> you keep telling me it's successful, yet. What's the time? All right. Wow, all right, finally, jeez. All right, so what I had to do is I had to change all of the settings. So I did export artboards to PDF. I said artboard content only. I unclicked export selected artboards and I kept include background in export. Maybe that was why. And I'm going to do it one more time to make sure it works. Could have sworn that that's what I did last time. Oh, whoops. Well, then I clicked on the wrong file. All right. Yep. Yeah, all right. One, two, three. Oh, yours will actually have three ads. All right. So. We're just over here solving, solving problems, trying to make up solutions. Perfect. And save. All right. With that being said, that is how to do the assignment. We finished up the assessment for this week and it was all done in under an hour, which is perfect. Um, also, Make sure that you have gone in, oh, excuse me, that you have gone in by Saturday, you've done your discussion. Don't forget your daily checkpoints. If you have not done the week one assessment, which is the quiz, I opened it back up until Saturday because I want you all to pass. Do you want to know why? Number one, because it's expensive if you fail a course. It costs about $1,500 out of your pocket to fail a course. Did you know that? Financial aid, student loans, things like that, grants, they don't pay for Fs. You have to pay for those out of pocket. Don't pay for an F out of pocket, please. Um, next, 
reason why. If you guys don't pass, they come at us and they say, why didn't your students pass? What are you doing wrong? And the thing is, is I want to make sure that I'm doing everything right for you guys. I, I, you know, I don't want to get yelled at if people don't do their homework. It's not really fair to me. I feel like I'm cool with you guys. I feel like I, I really try to work for you guys. So I just, you know, I really want that in return. But ultimately, I want you guys to pass. I want you guys to do awesome in this class. This is a great class. There's a lot of fun projects in this class. I think you can see my enthusiasm of teaching you guys these projects. So um, if you have any questions or concerns, please um, get in touch with me. If you, if you need something else from me, please let me know. But I definitely hope that these videos are going to help you out and get you um, all finished for the week. And let me know if you guys need anything else. All right. Have a great one.